A Medeca Center survey shows that less than 20% of Chinese are happy with Barisan National. This is far lower than the other ethnic groups. Uh, what will you do to win the Chinese vote? Well, I uh, don't look at it uh, specifically uh, on so-called Chinese uh, per se, but rather I believe in a more uh, an embracing approach, meaning now, whenever I serve the constituents, certainly, what I have in mind is not just uh, Chinese issues or non-Chinese issues, but rather whether or not the issues at hand are relevant or not. And at the same time, of course, I, uh, being trained as an engineer during my younger days, I believe in troubleshooting. And uh, to be mourned over issues after issues, of course, that has been the order of the day now because people are getting more and more critical or even sometimes cynical of issues. But what is important to me is uh, seeking the solution. And perhaps sometimes uh, we need to uh, walk an extra mile just to get that done. And why do you think um, the Chinese support is so low for Barisan National? Surely this must be a question that weighs on your mind as yeah, you talk well, to but, your but stakeholders. Of course, I, I must uh, uh, share with you that... Uh, uh, my little observation yeah, on the ground. Uh, what you say is based on the the overall percentage, the overall percentage, the approval rating yeah, for BN among the Chinese voters. But to me, that might vary from place to place. Uh, I'm not just uh, you know uh, having rosy thoughts, hoping that my own constituents, uh, especially those of Chinese origin, uh, would vote me, vote for me. But rather, I believe that hard work, perseverance and uh, sincerity in serving the people would make the difference. So you're trying to, when you approach um, your campaign, your politics, you try to not see the race. So then do you think that the model of Barisan National where parties are representing ethnic groups, that is an increasingly outdated model? Uh, to me, I never, I never make any attempt to hide my... Uh, uh, my polemics, or rather my arguments, that uh, uh, race-based politics, honestly, is no longer relevant. Even when I served as the president of MCA, I said that. I remember. So that's a model. So then what does that uh, put MCA? Where does that put MCA? Well, in fact, what is important now uh, for a party like MCA is to spearhead uh, real changes. When I say real changes, meaning... It's not just confined to lip services or even uh, uh, empty talks, but more importantly, uh, the party itself now has to transform uh, both in terms of mindset of the people, mindset of the uh, uh, members, the grassroots especially, and at the same time, now you need to have a roadmap, meaning now you need to go through some evolutionary changes. You can't expect the party to change overnight, even if it were to open up to all races overnight, I don't think that uh, uh, it is going to get there because people, especially human mind, needs time uh, to condition. And more so, you need to educate to enlighten your own members uh, on one hand. And on the other hand, you need to reach out to a wider segment of the community. Community, the Malaysian community, I mean. I don't mean to say that only the Chinese. And let them know that what you have in mind and how you are going to transform your party. So when you say change their mindset, um, what do you mean? I mean, from what to what? Uh, there are, the yeah, mindset? of course, uh, within each and every party, you are bound to have some uh, so-called uh, old habits, old habits or even uh, deeply entrenched like what? Uh, belief. For instance, like uh, uh, in MCA, uh, most of the branches or even at the assembly, the general assembly, uh, Mandarin is the lingua franca, or perhaps uh, even the party literature, uh, is mostly published in Chinese language and sometimes, of course, with some Bahasa or even English. But uh, what I can foresee that is, now, given the kind of uh, changes at hand, now, the party, in, f in fact, needs to raise against time uh, to transform. So what, um, does that mean you don't just print your literature in Chinese? Uh, that is just the, one of the very basic fundamentals. We should do more than that far more than that because you need to reach out not just to the Chinese speaking groups 
but also at its, at the same time to all races so that they understand what MC yeah, is doing. and also at the same time your agenda your agenda must be all embracing and not just confined to the Chinese centric uh, issues so when you say roadmap and a new direction I know yeah. you're the former president um, but say if you know yeah. a chance that you but might but I, I fail in my uh, transformation <laughs> I, I must admit that and why do you think you fail? well uh, actually uh, a host of factors uh, I did my own post-mortem as well yeah, and uh, well, given the fact that uh, at that point of time, I uh, I opened up too many battlefronts, meaning you now within too short a time, uh, you you want to force yourself to do as much as you could, and uh, at the same time, I was then racing against time. I gave myself three years, uh, thinking that perhaps within three years, that is from two zero zero eight till twenty eleven, now I could uh, at least do something. But unfortunately, very unfortunate indeed. Now, ever since the uh, the PKFZ issue uh, was brought to the fore, and uh, and later on it became uh, a nationwide uh, uh, a nationwide issue, a hot topic. Then, of course, as you uh, you might have read from the uh, news reports, that had drawn a lot of flicks, a lot of uh, brickbats uh, from within, from within. I mean, uh, from BN, yeah, and even my own party, and that also, in a way, uh, that also had uh, aggravated my position as the party president, now, because because of all these uh, so-called intertwined, intertwined uh, interests, yeah, among certain individuals, but uh, at my hindsight, of course, I must admit that, uh, well, uh, transformation is still the answer to the party in order to make it relevant. Transformation is not just confined to uh, change of, uh, uh, of uh, so-called membership uh, inhibitions. That is, you need to open up. So you would open up the membership yep. of MCA? And I even thought of uh, the, uh, the new name, or rather, uh, the new name under the acronym MCA. And of course, that was my rosy thought at that point of time. And I don't mind sharing with you that uh, what I had in mind then was the Malaysian, the Malaysian Communities Alliance. And you still could find uh, my fingerprints in the so-called, uh, in the 1MCA, the 1MCA uh, Foundation. Actually, that name was uh, concocted by me. I use the word 1 Malaysia. Uh, Chinese, not Chinese, Community Alliance. So, um, any aspirations to come back into MCA in the top leadership? Well, I think that's a bit too far-fetched now because uh, uh, knowing very well that I need to uh, I need to cross a bridge, especially at this juncture, when my candidacy is at stake. Right. And when everybody is speculating whether or not Ong Tiket is going to contest, uh, on MCA or BN ticket or whatever ticket or even uh, some party insiders that have been uh, spreading uh, lies, I call that lies s claiming that the uh, ticket may hop uh, from this party to another and all this actually I uh, many a time I chose to brush it aside And why wouldn't you want to go into the opposition um, well, side? Considering but of course, how the I think, party has uh, yeah. treated you well, I, I, of course, I do understand that uh, the kind of uh, uh, unprecedented treatment that I have been getting thus far, uh, certainly, uh, many a time, is quite demoralizing. But uh, having that in mind, yeah, I, for one, I hold to my principle. Because everybody, there must be some do's and don'ts. Yeah, and, uh, and join the opposition to uh, those. Well, in fact, I must say that... Uh, no, the, the very first day when I first joined, when I joined MCA, uh, that was not due to anybody's influence or any induction, anybody's induction, but rather because I believe that the party can at least do something for the community. Community, it doesn't mean that it's only for the Chinese, but I have a bigger picture in mind. And, you, and you think the opposition cannot support that? Uh, well, of, of course, uh, without the... Without, uh, uh, touching on uh, some of the so-called uh, the defects uh, of the other side of the divide, 
uh, I must say that uh, I do understand their set of problems. They are not free from their own set of problems too. Meaning, in politics, whether you're on this side or the other side, certainly you have your own set of problems. So you talked about transformation. Yeah. How long then do you think um, Barisan National could get to a point where it really becomes like a multiracial, like a single party, multiracial, rather than parties representing a community? No. To merge all parties or to transform BN into a single party, of course. Now, this is certainly not going to be achievable now within a short span of time, meaning it is not something immediate. It can't be something instant. But having said that, I think uh, uh, BN as a whole, it is a multiracial entity comprising 14 component parties. But whether or not it could live up to the expectation or otherwise, of course, uh, that remains debatable uh, among our people, I mean, uh, within our f social fabric. Some may ag agree and some may not. But uh, by and large, I think what is important is our mindset, whether or not those in BN, uh, from the top right up, uh, right down to the bottom, to the grassroots, are they ready to, uh, to have a brand new mindset that is we must do away with all this ethnic and religious compartmentalization uh, in our mindset. So do you think the present leadership of Barisan National is ready to take uh, out this I transformation? Could, yeah, I could see that the Prime Minister himself, at least, uh, he made a very good effort when he uh, first mooted the idea of One Malaysia. I said this, I said this not because he's a Prime Minister or uh, being the... Uh, the chairman, the president of BN, the ruling party, but rather, to me personally, now, one Malaysia certainly is a goal for us to achieve and we must work towards it and shouldn't we shouldn't leave it as just an ideal or perhaps uh, just a distant goal. We must work towards it. Well, the opposition yeah. in a way has that model, right? Because DAP, although people are trying to perceive it as a very Chinese-based party, mm -hmm but they have uh, non-Chinese in there, and so is P uh, PKR. You have quite a mix of races there. Yep. In a way, the opposition is already representing Yeah, them. in fact, uh, likewise in BN, uh, you have uh, Garakan or PPP but, and other, but other how, parties how, as well. But how strong is the leadership of Garakan at this point? Um, it well, seems course. to be a bit directionless. Uh, well, the number of seats that uh, they managed to secure, of course, normally is being made the uh, barometer uh, for measuring the uh, level of success. But uh, back to your question, I must say that uh, now even uh, the multi-ethnic representation now within uh, the Pakatan parties like uh, DAP or even PKR, right? even that uh, certain critics uh, might have branded uh, their multi-ethnic multi representation as mere tokenism, mere tokenism. And uh, what happened lately, especially in, I think about a month ago, yeah, beginning of uh, January, uh, well, when uh, people make you and cry over uh, the the uh, uh, the lack of uh, Malay representation that in the leadership of the DAP, of course, that gave us a lot of food for thought. Well, arguably, uh, Amno it's a dominant party. Yeah. Yeah. In the in the whole setup of Barisan National. Yeah, and uh, uh, in a way, yes. Uh, being the mainstay of BN, uh, certainly they have been playing a relatively dominant role. But at the same time, I think there must be sufficient uh, space for other component parties as well, and uh, that would would be one of the key factors in making the kind of. Uh, collaboration, the uh, multi-party collaboration uh, sustainable because but because otherwise for sure you are going to hit it, you are going to hit some snacks just like uh, uh, for instance now in Pakatan in the case of Pakatan until today everybody knows that the choice of PM the choice of PM yeah that we did Pakatan remains uh, one of the touchy issues to I know because we know very well that even past until today, they might have different thoughts. And this is no uh, propaganda. 
because we know very well that from friends uh, within Pakatan, the fall of Pakatan, they've been talking about that as well. Um, there's skeptics say that the MCA, yeah. um, the collaboration is not equal with AMNO. In that, a sense, yeah. In fact, uh, that is one of the uh, uh, the points that uh, I I would like to elaborate here now because now if you want to have a meaningful collaboration, yeah, meaningful collaboration, then you must ensure that there is sufficient role, sufficient space, breathing space, all right? And uh, when I say role, means meaningful role, yeah, for the component parties to play within the fold of the collision. And uh, that is not just confined to uh, the federal leadership, mm. but also at the same time at the grassroots level. You need to have that. So what happens if MCA doesn't win many seats in these elections? Well, I, I must say that at the end of the day, uh, this is going to be uh, the barometric measurement for the relevance of the party. And uh, certainly the MCA needs to work hard if he wants to remain uh, sustainable and relevant. Thank <laughs> you.